All right, my fellow Sigmarites, I hope you're all doing well. And today, my friends, we're here with my multiplayer build guide to the Empire in Total War Warhammer. So essentially, we're going to be going through every single matchup for the Sons of Sigmar and taking a look at the lore choices, the units, heroes, magic, all that sort of good stuff. So hopefully after you guys have watched this video, if you're interested in playing multiplayer or maybe you're already a multiplayer veteran, some of these builds will either inspire your own builds or you can take them, give them a try and, uh, you know, have some fun. Another thing to note is that sometime in the next week, I will be releasing a comprehensive Empire guide that will be going over tactics, will be going over all the units in the roster. But this video today is going to be focusing explicitly on the multiplayer builds. So on that note, let us begin and jump right into the matchups. So the first matchup we're going to be talking about today is the Empire vs. the Beastmen. So this is a build I've had some pretty good proven success with. Basically, you go Boris Toddbringer because, you know, Franz is a little bit of overkill against the Beastmen. Toddbringer can usually handle, obviously, obviously he can handle Kazrak. He can deal with Morker. He causes terror. He regenerates. So if, if you do make the mistake of letting him get surrounded by big targets, he is going to be able to heal, unlike Franz, who will be a little bit more dependent on regrowth. Now... Lore of Life obviously is good here. You can use that. And, and something to kind of give you as a bit of a disclaimer before we go through these builds. There are so many different options you can use against these factions at work. That is the big strength of the Empire. But these are just the ones I really like to use. So here we have the Bright Wizard. The Bright Wizard is quite awesome for sure. Uh, Fireball, Cascading Fire Cloak, and Burning Head. Burning Head is so good against Beastmen. Fireball is good for sniping their, their casters. And Cascading Fire Cloak is really good for that clutch infantry fight. Front line is going to be unbreakable because Beastmen tend to run over your front line. And basically what you do is you just use the four Knights of the Blazing Sun to fight the, uh, you know, multitude of threats on the roster. You use the Pistoliers to support them and shoot down the Minotaurs and Chaos Spawn and various targets like that. What's really cool too is the Kindle Flame passive. So whenever you cast a spell here, uh, the entire enemy army gets a 22% fire weakness. And then you have four... Fire Cavalry, which is run over the Beastmen. This build has been quite effective for me, and I'm going to try my best not to just rant. I could like talk about the nuances of each build for a long time, but I'm just going to go through because there are a ton of matchups, guys. So next up, we're going to do the Empire vs. Bretonia. Uh, this is a build that was more or less used against me by Umais, and I didn't really think about it or playing this kind of style of play for, uh, you know, uh, I had my kind of, I was set in my ways, but he actually used the Arch Lecter, but uh, the variant I prefer is actually using Volkmar simply because he heals. Uh, whereas the Arch Lecter, I guess you get a little bit more armor, but I prefer Volkmar the Grim. But again, big shout out to you, Mize, for the uh, for the build inspiration here. So Amethyst Wizard, you basically just Spirit Leech down the Paladins and or the Questing Knights. You have a front battle line of state troopers. You don't really need good infantry quality against Bretonia. You have Sigmar Sun, Swordsmen, Spearmen. They should win, actually, many of the infantry fights, unless they go Battle Pilgrims. But even so, they'll, they'll hold their own. Three Halberds in the backfield to help win the Cavalry fight. You have the uh, Silver Bullets awaiting an ambush to shoot down high-value targets. Double Demogriff Knight Halberd, obviously pretty self-explanatory. These guys are there just to fight the Heavy Cavalry, fight the monsters and characters. Double Mortars, because you really do need to kill the Peasant Archers. Otherwise, they can overwhelm you. They can drag down your Demis with Weight of Fire, and it can be bad. So keeping the Mortars online is very important. And last but not least, we do have a great cannon as well, just to give you some ranged prowess. Now, the one thing that is certainly scary here is if your Bretonian opponent does go with triple trebuchet or something like that, you can be in a little bit of danger. But what you actually do is you use the Amethyst Wizard. You overcast Spirit Leeches to win the artillery duel. Uh, with your cannon and Spirit Leeches, you can usually take out the Trebs. Two Spirit Leeches kills uh, two trebuchet uh, models, which, you know, you, you usually can do quite well. That's actually what happened in the game against Umais. He did that to me, and I was very, very impressed. So next up, we have another build against Bretonia. Some of the matchups, I'll give you multiple builds. Some we won't. This is another one I've used. It's basically kind of a, a, a counter rush that's supported by War Wagon. So you push forward. Uh, you, you bring lower tier cavalry, which will, of course, lose against their, their heavy cavalry. But what you do is you support with Franz, Reichland, Runefang, and you have triple War Wagons lending their, their firepower, right? So the War Wagons are following the Empire Knights. You keep the Empire Knights behind your infantry, force them to push into you, support with spears, counter punch with Franz, and shoot with the war wagons and just try and bum rush them. If they go up in the sky with like Lewin, which does happen from time to time, you have an Empire Captain plus Franz who will 100% dominate that fight. If they come with a big air force, let's say they use like double Paladin plus uh, up in the sky with maybe some, you know, Hippo Knights, which you're not going to see, you can just run behind your war wagons and the war wagons can counter shoot them in the sky. So this build is definitely okay. I've had some success, but ultimately it is a matchup that is favored for Bretonia, so it always will be a bit of a struggle. Next up, we have the Empire vs. Chaos. This is a build that's uh, relatively proven here. Basically, Franz takes out the monsters and big threats. You have a state trooper front line backed up by double great swords because oftentimes Chaos players don't bring like great weapons in this matchup. They go with like Marauder Swarms and just bring like cheap kind of crappy infantry. Uh, you know, assuming that they're only going to be fighting state troopers. So what you do is you surprise them with two great swords. Great swords dominate many of those units. They trade okay with Chaos Warrior great weapons. Obviously, it's a little bit of a tough trade, but if you have Lore of Life and Cavalry support, you do the trick. 
one silver bullet, two outriders to be mobile. You protect your outriders against hounds and marauder horsemen with your empire knights. Again, you're keeping a relatively tight formation here. So this is a build that I've had some success with. Next up, uh, we have Volkmar the Grim against Chaos. So this is another build against the Warriors of Chaos. You have Volkmar the Grim and the Light Wizard. Again, going with Volkmar or Toddy, you do not need Lore of Life, right? So you just have the Jade Griffin here. The Light Wizard has Nets and Barona's Time Warp. And uh, yeah, it, it's very similar in, in theory. Basically, the difference is it's much more defensive. So you're going to be deploying your Great Swords and Sigmar Suns as your frontline troops. Your backline is defended by Spearmen with Shields. Triple handgunners in your center mass. Royal Alzor of Griffites there to protect against anything large trying to punch through. You net down the big threats, right? You focus down Kolek, you focus down Archeon, whatever. All those guys, you focus down the Dragon Ogres with the net and focus fire. Uh, Volkmar the Grim dominates the infantry fight with the Great Swords. Knights of the Blazing Sun are a sweeper unit for any loose Marauder units that get through. The Knights of the Blazing Sun deal with them. Demis deal with the big threats. Next up, we have... The Empire versus Vampire Counts, this is another matchup that I think is like 70-30 for Vampire Counts, really bad for the Empire, but it is winnable. So here we have uh, my own kind of spice on this build. Basically, you're going for an aerial dominance build. You have Franz, right? Normally you would be like, how is Franz going to defeat a Blood Dragon Lord plus Fell Bats? Well, what you do is you push up, you use the Pistoliers to shoot down the, the Bats and focus, and then Franz with the Jade Wizard healing uh, usually can do pretty well and dominate the Vampire Lords up in the sky. From there, you have a box towards the back of the map with Flagellon, Sigmar Suns, uh, Tatter Souls, Unbreakable Units, one Empire Knight is a roadblock, and you have your Steam Tank sitting inside your box, uh, shooting at the Blood Knights the entire time. It's very hard for the Vampires to get rid of. You put it in guard mode, it can shoot there the entire time. Its Steam Cannon helps against infantry. It does pretty well. You also have two War Wagons to follow the Pistoliers up to help you win the Air Force fight and also to deal with their heavy cavalry. The other build that uh, we have seen against the forces of the Vampires is uh no, it's the wrong one so empire versus counts the traditional version is very much what i like to call the soothsayer style of play so of course if you've seen talaxlon soothsayer playing in the uh, ever chosen grand finals this is more or less like what he brought against the vampires you have a, a decent grinding front line sigmar suns two great swords a uh, triple demi hammer so you're just trying to get those good engagements with your demis outmaneuver your opponent lore of life or sustainability to keep up with the vampires volkmar will pretty much clean up all the infantry and the demis deal with the monsters. This is a more traditional style of play, very durable, very high leadership. Typically, you don't want to go squishy units against vampires unless they're unbreakable, like flagellants. And you have one silver bullet just to kind of force the vampires to come to you. So again, this is like a more proven style of play, a little bit easier to manage as well, but um, both builds, I think, work. The Steam Tank variant actually does okay. So for the next matchup, we have the Empire versus, yes, the Dark Elves. So I actually have several builds for this. This is one of my funnier ones that I've had success with. It's Marcus... Um, with an unbreakable front line, you have double Lance Demis. And like I said earlier, I prefer Lance Demis against Dark Elves because of repeater crossbows. Having basically 35% uh, mitigation, I think is a 30% mitigation against repeater crossbow DPS uh, is really, really good. So you get them, they kill Corsairs more efficiently, they clean out Bleak Swords and Dread Spears more efficiently than the Halberd variant. And if you're worried about monsters like, oh, Malekith, Marathi, you have double handgunners, you have Marcus Wolfhart, they can deal with those threats, right? So you're just kind of sitting there defending your Hellblaster, using Marcus's nets to dictate the good engagements. You have your Empire roadblocks here to deal with cavalry uh, pressure and or infantry leakage. And it's a, it's a pretty decent little build. Next up, we have the uh, Empire vs. Dark Elf, the sniping variant. This is like one of my cheesier variants. You use Marcus, you get an Amethyst Wizard to Spirit Leech. So what you do is you, you net someone, you focus shot them, you Amber Bow, you Spirit Leech them, you snipe them with Pistoliers and Handgunners, and it's a little bit more of a cheesy variant. Still, though, you have enough width to hold, right? You have the Sigmar Suns and Flagellant Spears in the back. A triple Cavalry with one Knight of the Blazing Sun and two Empire Knights to hold back pressure. Pistoliers are really good at chasing down Dark Riders and out skirmishing them in general. I love Pistoliers in this matchup. They can also deal with Harpies, Manticores, uh, Witch Elves, a number of things Pistoliers are very good against. And Outrider Grenade Launchers are pretty much to that same purpose. You keep them close to your infantry. You use them to just blast enemy uh, Bleak Swords, Dread Spears, because Dark Elves are never going to bring elite infantry in this matchup. If they do, they're just going to lose to your handgunners. But if they if they bring like hordes of Bleak Swords and Dread Spears like they usually do, the grenade launchers do very well. Now, next up, we have Empire vs. Dark Elves with Volkmar. Uh, so we've seen two Marcus builds. This is my Volkmar variant. You can also use Franz, honestly. That's what's so neat. There are so many good builds. So these aren't like the, the end-all, do-all, right? Like these are just my builds that I like to use. So uh, next time you guys play me and you see me pick Empire, you can just come to this video and counterpick me. So, uh, well, I guess we got a couple variants. This one, again, is taking advantage of the fact that Volkmar can single-handedly dominate the infantry fight. From there, the Light Wizard on a horse uses nets to synergize with your triple handgunners to focus down high-value targets. 
Uh, typically in this matchup, you're not trying to push the Dark Elves unless they go bolt throwers. Uh, you're the one that's going to be defending against rushes, right? Empire Knights are used to defend the back line. Knights of the Blazing Sun can cycle charge through the front line, come back through. Uh, Empire Knights, uh, or excuse me, Knights of the Blazing Sun actually do defeat the um, uh, Cold Loon Knights on the charge and do very well against infantry. So they can do some great work. And yeah, this build again uh, does pretty well for me. Next up, we are switching to a different matchup, probably the hardest matchup in the game for the Empire. So I have two builds here. One build is my Hellstorm Rocket Battery build. This one, if you're on a big map, uh, you use this one. This one is very good on a big map because if you go infantry rush against dwarves on a, on a large map, you're just going to get gunned down by their artillery and guns and it's going to be a bad time. But on a big map, you go four Hellstorms, which actually outrange all the Dawi artillery. So let's say dwarves go triple cannons, okay? You blast their cannons with the Hellstorms. You overcast spirit leeches uh, on their artillery. And typically you can actually win the artillery duel. And then the dwarves have to advance. And while they're advancing, the reason why you bring Pistoliers against Dwarves is to kill Slayers. Slayers are the bane of the Empire. They're so awful to deal with. So Pistoliers can annihilate Slayers. Uh, so too can Outrider Grenade Launchers. So you kill their ranged. Uh, you shoot their Thunders. You shoot their ranged pieces. Once you kill their cannons, their Thunders, with your four Hellstorms, you then force them to advance. From there, you use the Pistoliers to kill the Slayers and Grenade Launchers as well. Marcus can net them down. He can snipe their Lord. And you just kind of hold with these troops in the front line, these State Troopers. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a decent build. It's still very hard. Typically, you will lose against dwarves unless you know you really outplay them. But um, yeah, this one has worked for me against very good dwarf players. Next up, we have the Empire vs. Dwarves Infantry variant. This one I saw in the, um, I think it was Alfredino who used it in the uh, RTK vs. ODM Clan War, and I was very impressed. This is kind of like how they used to do it in Warhammer 1. You basically just go Greatsword Spam. You get cheap halberds for armor piercing. Two handgunners to follow up. It's a threat overload, right? Like the dwarves can shoot your handgunners, but if they do, then the greatswords are just going to dunk on them. And greatswords actually do do pretty well against dwarves. Just historically, they haven't because uh, obviously they can be focused on by thunders and guns and cannons pretty effectively. But um, with the threat overload and the amount of saturation of pressure you're putting on them, you, you literally have unbreakable pressure to fight slayers. You have greatswords, which defeat actually... They, they defeat longbeards, longbeards with great weapons. They defeat pretty much all the dwarven non-super elite infantry. Uh, and the halberds actually can outtrade many of the basic troops like dwarf warriors and miners and things like that. So it's just a threat overload build. And honestly, on a small map, I've seen this do pretty well against the dwarves. So that's Empire vs. Dwarves in a nutshell. Next up, we have Empire vs. Greenskins. This is a Huntsman variant. So again, Sigmar Suns, Flagellants in the front line. You got Spears to defend your backfield against Spider Rider pressure. Triple Huntsmen, uh, which can kill Stone Trolls. They can also do very well against... Um, Against Greenskin Skirmishers, you have Triple Knights of the Blazing Sun to shock down their Savage Orcs, their Orc Boys, their Goblins, AP Cloonies. Uh, the one weakness this build does have is actually against Black Orcs. If they come in with like two Black Orcs, it can be problematic. But even still, you have Franz with his Armor Piercing, and Black Orcs can be focused down and uh, eventually grinded down. But that is the one weakness of this build. Uh, there have been some variants I've used where basically uh, what you'll do is you'll cut one Knight of the Blazing Sun, you get like a single greatsword, and then you throw in like an additional spear by cutting the life bloom and things like that. So you could could go this route for sure. You could just like throw in one greatsword to get a little bit of dedicated armor piercing. Uh, there's a number of ways to do it. Or you can just throw in the silver bullets, right? And then suddenly you cut one of these guys, and now you have some dedicated armor piercing, and you throw in a greatsword, and boom. Now you're all set. But the Triple Huntsman is very strong too. It depends on your opponent, but um, I would probably even go with this variant over the previous one we just talked about. So next up, we have Empire vs. Greenskins once again. This is my standard build. So what we do here is we have Franz, uh, the wizard here, because I like Franz. Volkmar is good, but I really like someone that if Grom the Paunch is being a, just a troll, uh, Franz can get in there and bully the shit out of him. Franz just beats the brakes off him. And on top of that, Franz does route stone trolls and has the ability to chase them off the battlefield. Whereas Volkmar can't deal with stone trolls, nor can he deal with uh, Grom the Paunch. So I, I, I do prefer Franz. A little bit more dangerous. Volkmar is still amazing in this matchup, but uh, I prefer the Franz. That's just my play style. So we got the Jade Wizard for healing. We have Double Great Sword to... Again, surprise your opponent. That's how great swords play. Uh, your opponent comes in with Savage Orcs, Savage Orc Biggins, uh, Goblins, shit like that, expecting you to have state troopers. And suddenly Sigmar comes in with his just fully erect mustache and just bullies him, right? And on top of that, we have the Sigmar Suns too. Silver Bullets, a double Knight of the Blazing Sun, and the one Steam Tank in the center can shoot Stone Trolls, can shoot the uh, the Lords, and basically it's just a giant terror route. This is like a defensive terror route build. That's how you win it. You get these Alpha Strikes, you terror out your opponent, and you grind them down. It's still a slightly favored Greenskin matchup, but in my experience, the Empire can do well. You can even switch out your boy uh, Volkmar into this build if you want to, and then you can do just fine here. This, this works too. But 
a lot of green skin players bring Azag also. And then Azag really bullies Volkmar plus a steam tank, and he's hard to bring down with just silver bullets. That is, again, why I prefer the Franz. He definitely does very well. So next up, we're getting through the matchups nice and good. We have Empire vs. High Elf Rush. So this is just a pretty straightforward rush. You push forward. It's a threat overload build. You have Volkmar. You have an Empire Captain marching in the front. Jade Wizard to heal. If you're going double Greatsword and triple Demi, you have to bring healing. You have to, right? So you just push. Greatswords defeat Rangers. They defeat Silver and Guard. They defeat Spearmen. They uh, trade. I think they do out trade White Lines just barely. And they will lose against Swordmasters and Elite Troops, but nobody's going to bring those. Maybe it's some Phoenix Guard, but even still Greatswords trade well there. So you, you push up with your infantry. Silver Bullets lay a little bit back in ambush. And then your Demogriff Knights with Volkmar the Grim overload a flank and just try and crack in while your Greatswords usually win the frontline fight with the Sigmar Sun. So it's a very straightforward rush build. Now, there's a couple ways to play against High Elves. You can go very wide like this. This was a build that was given to me by the great Alfred Dino, or at least was inspired. He was kind of telling me his play style. And this build definitely is pretty good, right? Huntsman General, just budget. Anti-Large, Phoenixes, Dragons, anything like that. He can just sit and shoot at them all day for 750 gold. Right Wizard, you just use Burning Head. Burning Head takes care of Rangers, Spearmen, Archers, Lothern, Seaguard. And you use Fireballs to win artillery duels. So, for example, if you have a Hammer of the Witches and they have two... Uh, to bolt throwers, you can win the trade using the Hammer of the Witches and overcasting Fireball to snipe. You can actually win that. From there, you have State Trooper front line backed up by Triple Hunt or Quad Huntsman. Huntsman can shoot down a number of targets in the High Elf roster. They're heavy cavalry. Uh, Dragon Prince is a little bit tricky, but again, for Dragon Princes, you have the Silver Bullets and the Hammer of the Witches. Empire Knights are defensive roadblocks. This is very much like a defensive build, and uh, you win the artillery trade. You force them to come to you. A torrent of fire coming in from the Huntsman and Silver Bullets. And it does pretty well. So, um, yeah, I've, I've seen similar builds. Uh, yeah, definitely a cool one. The last one is one of my favorites. It's actually using a Marcus with a great sword front line. So this is very good against High Elf Rush. High Elves do sometimes rush you with Rangers. Rangers heavily out-trade uh, State Trooper front lines. So what you do is you get the great swords to dominate that. You get a Hellstorm rocket battery from downtown just to blast their archers and Lothar and Sea Guard, which actually can do quite well. Demis with Lances defeat Silverhelms. They trade pretty well with uh, Dragon Princes. They defeat uh, Reavers very easily. They can hammer down Armored Infantry, which High Elves do have. You have Double Huntsmen to deal with monsters and various other threats, and the Silver Bullets as well. But this one is pretty fun. It's a bit of a gamble because if they do bring the right tools like a Deathcaster to overcast Spirit Leech on Sunmaker, you pretty much lose. But if they don't, then, you know, suddenly the Sunmaker wins you the game. So that was the summary of, yes, all the High Elf builds. Next up, we have the Empire vs. Lizardmen. So this is a matchup that's very difficult. I think this one's actually quite lizard favored. This is one that I do. It's basically a rush and it's very, very straightforward. You have a Sigmarite front line. You're fighting skin cohorts and sores. You don't need to win any beauty contests. But with four cavalry units, four knights of the blazing sun, any skink cohorts, any uh, you're just, you know, skink cohorts with javelins, Saurus warriors are going to get run over very badly. Against Temple Guard and Armor, you have triple outrider. But typically the idea here is to really win the infantry fight. Isolate them using Nets of Amatok, use the triple outriders to focus down uh, bigger targets and threats like Basilodons and Krokar, whatever, Mazda Mundi, you name it. But yeah, this build I've had some success with. I've lost some, I've won some. It's a hard matchup overall. Now, the next build was inspired by Talaxla and Soothsayer. I did see him using this build or a similar variance on several occasions. It's a very wide pike and shot build. So you have Volkmar the Grim, you have a Lightcaster. Again, this build doesn't need healing outside the Greatswords, and even with just two Greatswords, it's not really, you don't need it that much. So front lines, great sword, Sigmar Suns. We got Spears, uh, quad handgunner to focus down a number of targets, supported by Nets of Amatok. And you basically use the uh the great sword, Sigmar Suns, and Halberds to win many of the cavalry and infantry fights. And to deal with ca uh, chameleon skinks, which are the worst part of this matchup, you buffer them out using the spearmen with shields. So the spearmen just sit in the back, and if the skinks are rotating around your lines, they just form ranks, use their shields, and you you basically just run them out of ammo with attrition. But I really do like this build. I think it's nice. It's uh, it's very straightforward to use, right? You just move forward. You got your handgunner box. You focus down high value targets. You use Barona's time warp to actually buff up the great swords in the infantry fight, and they will dominate Saurus. Great swords already beat Saurus and trade upwards into Temple Guard. It's a good trade for you. And Volkmar can pretty much be a force multiplier. He can be anywhere you need him. And uh, the one thing I forgot to do is get the Jade Wizard, but you do want to get that there. And basically, um, yeah, you could just even like cut like Barona's time warp or something, and you know just get the nets. And that, that build is going to be more than fine. So next up, that is it for the Lizardman builds I like. We have Empire vs. Norska, and this is a proven build I've used against great Norskan players and have had consistent success with. Uh, Norska will come with Berserkers and Marauders. Therefore, double greatswords usually dominate that frontline engagement pretty well, right? 
you're backed up by double handgunners, so silver bullets and handguns uh, are shooting down the mammoths, which are going to be netted by Marcus Wolfhart. If any skin wolves get in, Knights of the Blazing Sun give them the dirty with their fire damage and shock damage. You also have the Royal Altar of Griffites in case of Femir, where armored skin wolves and grenade launchers are just so goddamn good against Norskin infantry. This build is tried and true, very proven. You can switch, like this build here, you can switch uh, in Volkmar. Basically what you would need to do is just kind of cut one thing down. So you would probably just cut like, you know, you can cut, I don't know, like any number of things. Just cut one handgun or whatever, right? Or you can switch in Franz if you want to. Franz is also very good in this matchup. There's like a bunch of ways you can play this, but this style of double Knight of the Blazing Sun and Griffites is very, very good. Um, you could even cut the Griffite, get a third Knight of the Blazing Sun, and then get a second handgunner. The Griffites aren't essential, but it's really nice having that extra terror. But Knights of the Blazing Sun are the best unit in this matchup. They kill Norskin infantry, they kill most Norskin monsters, and uh, the magic resist is quite nice against Famir, who do magic damage, and also against Norskin magic. So yeah, in general... Very, very good matchup. I actually like that one for the Empire. I think I think it's like considered to be even, but um, in general, yeah, I think it's totally fine. No, so next up we have Skaven. Skaven is a, a even matchup as well, I would say. This is my first Skaven build. This is my rush. So Volkmar, you rush with uh, Davy Crockett here, and what he does is he summons Manticores in the Skaven lines, and you snipe their characters. Sigmar sons in Flagellants, just bum-rushing through the Skaven lines in a Cavalry Zerg. Uh, three Empire Knights, two Knights of the Blazing Sun, triple Pistoliers. Pistoliers kill Rat Ogres, Hell Pit Abominations, Death Runners, Guando, Rats, anything like that. Brood Horrors. Knights of the Blazing Sun can dominate pretty much any Skaven monsters. They are really good against Hell Pits because of their fire damage, really good against Rat Ogres on the charge, at least. you got to make sure you're getting the charges. Uh, so what I like to do is just like have like two Empire Knights rush up the center with the Flagellants, and then my other three Cavalry do like a big flank overload while Pistoliers focus down targets. And Volkmar just penetrates in, and you use him to disrupt the weapons teams uh, using his banishment on top of, you know, uh, high-value targets like Council Guard. It's very, very strong for sure. So next build uh, here against Skaven. I have a bunch against Skaven. I have uh, very practiced against him because I play against Hadri's a lot. This is a meme build of sorts, uh, but it can actually do okay. Volkmar, Bright Wizard with Burning Head and Fireball. You have Archers and uh, Free Company Militia, which push up. And then you have four Empire Knights, as well as a Luminarch. So Luminarch uh, can instantly win you the game against Skaven if they go with, like, Throughout the Unclean. Skaven are very weak against Lord Sniping. So as long as you are on, like, a medium-sized map, you can keep it out of range of Gisales, which have sub-300 range. You can snipe Skaven Lords and characters and do pretty well with this build. Again... You can, you can rush and support, or you can play defensively uh, with the Luminarch. This build's okay. Basically, archers kill ogres and things like that. Free company militia can fight clan rats, scaven slaves, and also shoot with their, you know, armor piercing, not the non armor piercing shots against a number of the bigger targets. So give it a try. You're, you're going to love the way it looks. So this is my third scaven build. This is my most recent one I've been kind of practicing with. You use Toddy. You use the Empire Captain, so Toddy heals himself, opening up other casters. You get the Amethyst Wizard with Spirit Leech. What you do here is you win the Artillery Duel. So this is very good against Gaven on big maps. Triple Cannons will easily kill Triple Gisele, especially with Amethyst Wizard overcasting Spirit Leech. So you kill their Gisales, you kill their Mortars, they're forced to charge at you. When they charge at you, Toddy plus the Empire Captain can pick them apart with the support of Empire Knights and Pistoliers, and it's a very, very strong build. Definitely give it a try, but this is a better build on bigger maps. On smaller maps, you're going to lose because the Skaven Gisales will come in. They'll be able to get in range of your great cannons and they'll kill you very quickly. So don't use this on Troll Country, Pillar Bone, uh, those kind of maps, Spirit Essence. Use this on, you know, Oaken Hammers, Progs, uh, MP Blue Reach River, things like that. On smaller maps, the rushes I showed you, going to be much better. So next up, uh, let's take a look here. We have Empire versus Tomb Kings. Uh, this is a pretty good matchup for the Empire, in my opinion, because Tomb Kings basically auto loses the Burning Head. So you get Toddy. Toddy's very good. Armor piercing. He can kill constructs. He can fight Cetra, fight Ushapti, Tomb Scorpions, uh, Camry and War Sphinxes, you name it. Just stay away from the big uh, the big scary Necro Sphinx. He's got the Bright Wizard. Bright Wizard just burning heads. Tomb Guard and Infantry and Archers. Fireball snipes characters. Frontline. It holds, right? Flagell and Sigmar Sons will hold them back all day. If they go triple Ushapti Great Bow, typically your double Great Cannons will out-trade there with a superior range as long as you buffer properly. You got two Knights of the Blazing Sun, which are very excellent at killing Tomb King's Infantry, can hold their own against Cavalry. But you don't want to be fighting Necropolis Knights head up. They'll win against your Knights. So you buffer them out with Spears. And when the Knights are forced to commit, you then countercharge them with your Spear support. And Grenade Launchers, again, another another tool for really um, dealing with the infantry. Now, this build is a little bit heavy on killing infantry. You could cut this guy, for example, get another Great Cannon if you want to. Or even spend that 800 gold just to get another uh, support piece somewhere in the army. Like an Empire Knight, if you can find a way to, you know cut some of Toddy's abilities or something like that. You could honestly just like cut that and you're going to be okay. So a number of ways to play it, but this is kind of my my core play style of how to play against Tomb Kings. Burning Head is a must. 
So next up, we have Empire vs. Vampire Coast. I have two builds for this uh, that I really like to use. This is the classic. It's a, it's a push build, so you're not going to be sitting back. You rush in. Marcus is excellent. He can kill Noctilus. He can do really good against Luther. He's really good against a number of big threats. He can shoot gun bats down. Bright Wizard, Burning Head uh, is very, very good against the Undead, obviously. Good against Sirenes, Fireball, but more importantly, you need Flaming Sword of Ruin here. So if they have Sirenes, which they always have like two or three in this matchup, if not four, you use the Flaming Sword of Ruin on your missiles, focus them down with magic damage, or you put it on your Empire Knights, and an Empire Knight on the charge with Flaming Sword kills Sirenes very quickly. From there, you have Huntsmen. Huntsmen can outrange their guns. They can trade against their monsters. You have Silver Bullets to help against Sirenes. And if they do go crab heavy, if they want to be like, there's kind of a, a number of Chinese players I played against who are very good who go with like crab rushes that catch you off guard. And having Silver Bullets plus Marcus uh, does give you enough armor piercing with Huntsman support to usually deal with that. The next build is uh, going to be Empire vs. Vampire Coast, uh, the artillery variant. And this one, you basically sit back. You win the artillery trade. Double Great Cannons can outtrade Double Carronade with the support of Fireball. If they go Triple Carronade, you might have to potentially move your wizard up there and like try and get some Burning Heads or Advance. But you just win the artillery trade. You force them to shamble towards you. Uh, Marcus snipes Count Noctilus or whatever their lore choice is. Their Crabcaster, you name it. And the Huntsmen just do their thing. State Troopers do their thing. Typically, if they have Bombers, you want to focus down the Bombers first with your Huntsmen and just nuke them with Burning Heads because then your State Troopers actually defeat the Deckhand Mobs and it's just an all-route win. So yeah, this build's pretty good. And you can use Volkmar here too. Volkmar's not bad, but uh, I really, really enjoy Marcus Wolfart in that matchup. As you can see, Empire vs. Wood Elves is going to be the last matchup of the day. This is a tried-and-true build. I've been able to beat consistently high-level Wood Elf players with this. Huntsmen are just so goddamn good against Wood Elves. Their loose formation makes them hard to counterplay. They are devastating against um, Wild Riders, against Wood Elf Infantry, against Wood Elf Lords and Characters. They're just so good. Um, Knights of the Blazing Sun, Heavy Cavalry has always been part of the formula against the uh, Wood Elves because they just dominate them so hard, right? Volkmar the Grim is like pushing. So if they have like Waywatchers, Waywatchers of course can move and dip, but Volkmar can like absorb those shots and do very well. Uh, and now this is the one place where I kind of fluctuate. Lately, I've been playing a lot of Wood Elf players who like to use Arrow of Kernis just to kind of cheese your casters, which I think is like an ability that needs some tuning. It's really just stupid. But you basically bring two casters. You bring a Burning Head caster to deal with Dryads in case they have Rushes, also good against Stagnant uh, lines of Glade Guard spam, and then you bring a Light Wizard. So I kind of ride them together, net down their Cavalry, charge them, net down their Lord, Burning Head their stuff. It's a push build, right? So you just kind of push up, you do your thing. And again, there's a bunch of ways to play that, and there's also some very fun spicy versions you can do. This is another build I've done. We can throw this in as a bit of a bonus here at the end. But basically, you get the Black Lions and you get the Silver Bullets. Um, so from here, we just cut this. And yeah, that's honestly looking more or less fine. So we can cut you guys, get another Knight of the Blazing Sun, and then just get like two Spearmen. This build is actually pretty good. I was able to use it against, uh, I think it was against Xyphos in, uh, in the King of the Hill stream, and it did quite well. But from here, you would probably, um, you could either go with Burning Head, but I think probably going with Burning Head Fireball is a little bit better. Um, you can even do Cascading Fire Cloak, but something like this, right? So what you do, uh, the Black Lions will force them forward. When they come in, you know, you can get the big fire synergies with the Knights of the Blazing Sun. You can change the Bright Wizard out for a net caster too. They're both viable, but um, something like this can work very well. It's one of the few niche matchups in which I think the Black Lions are very good. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are builds for every single matchup in the game for the Sons of Sigmar. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you have any feedback, do let me know. Something I was thinking about actually adding into the build guides was uh, deployment. So for example, if I'm showing you the Beastmen versus the Empire, I could show you how I like to deploy in advance. That could be something that we could do very easily. So if you guys would like to see that, let me know. Or if you think it's fine as it is, a little bit more condensed, we can go with that as well. So thank you all again for watching. Stand by for uh, updates here in the next week for the Comprehensive Empire Guide that is is going to be talking about the entire unit roster. We'll be talking about general tactics, uh, you know, all sorts of good stuff. The second guide that is coming out is going to be more focused on probably a beginner's tactics and, of course, how to functionally use all the different units on the roster, which ones are good, which ones are bad, which ones work well together. Should be quite a bit of fun. So thanks again for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you're not subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. It does help me out quite a bit. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please do drop a like. Take care, my friends. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And Sigmar bless, baby.